Let's go ahead and start our meeting. Welcome to the Energy, Climate Change, and Environmental Justice Committee. Um, Madam Clerk, can you go ahead and call the roll? Mr. Clerk, I should say. Sorry about that. <laughs> Good afternoon, Madam Chair. Uh, Mr. Kikorian is present. Mr. Koretz is present. Ms. Martinez is present. All right, thank you. Uh, um, members, if there's no objection, I'd like to continue item number one. Okay, without objection, that will be the order. I'm going to go ahead and take public comment. Uh, if I call your name, please come up to the table. Achi Ali, are you here? Yes. Want to come on up? <coughs> Is that you? Yes. Okay, well, I'm calling public comment now, so can you please come to the table so you can go ahead and speak on why you're here? Uh, only if I call your name. So go ahead and take a seat. Reginald Kennan, are you here? Don Martin, Amalia Sanchez, you want to come on up? So all four of you filled out a card for general public comment, is that correct? You're not speaking on any particular item, is that right? That's right. Correct. Okay, so go ahead, we're going to start with you. Okay, so my name is Aichi Ali, I'm a nurse at Good Samaritan Hospital and I'm representing the California Nurses Association. Just bring the microphone a little closer. Can you hear me better? Yeah. Do you want me to repeat? Go ahead. Yeah, you can. Um, can you start her time again, please? So, it's saying, my name is Aichi Ali. I work for Good Samaritan Hospital. And I'm representing the California Nurse Association, which is over 15,000 members in our LA community. And our members are deeply concerned and committed about the role of the big oil in our city and in our world, both as a driver of climate change and as it impacts the health of the working class communities of color as we serve LA hospitals. The CNA fully supports Stan LA's campaign for a 2,500 foot human health and safety buffer ordinance. We need the city council to act without delay on this proposal and provide the kind of bold leadership on environmental and social justice that we know you can make changes to. Thank you very much. Next speaker is, uh, Reg did I call Reginald Kennan or Don Martin first? What's your name? Reginald Kennan. Okay, go ahead. Okay. My name is Reginald Kennan and I live at 2655 South Manhattan Place, uh, within a half mile of the Murphy's oil and gas drilling site. Um, I would like the energy, climate, and uh, change environmental justice committee to strongly recommend a setback of 2,500 feet as only, yeah, only way to assure safety for my family and neighbors. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Don Martin. My name is Don Martin. I live within 300 feet, uh, I'm sorry, 300 feet of a toxic realm disposal unit located at the Murphy drill site. As a result of the chemicals that are being disposed from that particular site, my granddaughter, 11-year-old granddaughter, has contracted Hodgkin's lymphoma, which is a lymphoma of the lymph nodes. I have watched as she's being treated, being treated with chemotherapy to get rid of the toxics that were in her system. I further watched my wife die from these chemicals. On Monday, May the 13th, they took out the left side of her brain. On the 13th, the Wednesday, they removed the right side of her brain. At this particular site, there's a sign that reads, the state of California knows that this location contains chemicals that will cause cancer, birth defects, and other reproductive harm. So I urge this committee to act. Thank you, Mr. Martin. Expeditiously. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and ask those three of you who've already spoke if you can take your seat. I'm going to call three more speakers before I call on Ms. Um, Sanchez. Jennifer Blannon, are you here? Jed Smith? Jed Smith? Jed, are you here? Okay, there you are. Catherine Hoff? Catherine Hoff? Want to come on up? Amalia, you want to go ahead? No, no hablo inglés. Okay. Quiere que le traduzca yo, tiene traductora. ¿Usted tiene traductora? Yes. 
Usted lo hace, por favor. Ok, yo, yo le traduzco. I will translate for Ms. Amalia Sánchez. Uh -huh. okay. Mi nombre es Amalia Sánchez. No, de... My name is Amalia Sánchez. Vengo de la ciudad de Wilmington. Donde... I come from the community of Wilmington. Donde están los pozos petroleros más, que okay, existen más que todo la, el territorio de California. O We el have país. some of the largest uh, oil wells more than any part of the, uh, in the state of California. Y venemos, uh, vengo representando a, a, la, a mi comunidad. ¿verdad? I come representing my community. Para que los pozos petroleros estén, los, los pozos que ya existen, los pozos que vayan a ser, sean retirados dos mil Acabes dos mil quinientos de pasos de retirado de la comunidad. I'm asking, I'm here to ask that the existing um, oil wells have a, a approximately twenty five hundred feet for residential. Porque esto está afectando bastante a la comunidad. Ha, en, en, ha habido va, varios casos de cáncer de todos por los pozos que ya existen. Yeah, there has been a lot of cancer cases in the area because of the existing oil wells. Yeah. Pues okay. quería decir más, pero... Okay. Gracias, gracias, señora. Gracias. gracias. Um, um, did you want to go ahead? And, yes, I can. Yeah, so you are you're speaking on general public comment. Is that correct? Yes. Go ahead. My name is Jed Smith. I work with California Nurses Association. Uh, as uh, uh, the nurse uh, before me said, we represent approximately 15,000 nurses in the greater Los Angeles area, 90,000 nurses across the state, uh, and I represent about 1,500 Kaiser nurses at Kaiser Los Angeles Medical Center. The, uh, the extraction of, of oil in, in our city uh, has, has proven to uh, impact the health of some of our most uh, sensitive citizens in this city, and uh, we absolutely 100% stand behind uh, the, the 2,500 foot buffer zone that we're calling for uh, around these, these oil rigs and extraction sites uh, in the city of Los Angeles. Um, these these uh, sites and, and how they impact uh, the citizens of Los Angeles. We see every single day in our hospitals and folks are becoming more and more sick. Uh, their illnesses are becoming more and more acute and we need to do something immediately uh, to put a stop to this. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, our next speaker, Jennifer. Okay, Jennifer. My name is Jennifer Blannon and I'm a member of Holman United Methodist Church in the West Adams area. Uh, we are founding members of Stand LA Coalition. Our church is less than one half mile from these da and a dangerous active oil drilling site. We believe the presence of these oil, uh, oil drilling sites and gas in our neighborhood are dangerous and inconsistent with the values of our church and our traditions. As you know, the Petroleum Administrator's report came out two weeks ago. It was late, some 630 days. We, we are honestly discouraged by the findings and recommendations in the report, but we trust that um, the council members will be focused more on the community and the health of the individuals in our communities than on the oil, uh, oil companies and the oil industry. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm going to call uh, three other speakers before. You're, you're Catherine, right? I'm Catherine. Yeah. Uh, Ed Roman. Eric Roman, I'm sorry. Eric, sorry about that. Jared Parrott. Jed Parrott, Peggy Lee Kennedy, and um, Ali Cadillac. Are you here? Ali, is that right? Oh, there's no more room. Sorry. You're next as soon as Catherine speaks. Go ahead, Catherine. Good afternoon. My name is Catherine Hoff with Communities for a Better Environment, a member of Stand LA. Stand LA is extremely dismayed at some of the legal assumptions that are contained in the Petroleum Administrator's report, including an assumption that the city would face large financial liabilities if uh, a health and safety buffer were passed. We strongly disagree with this. Uh, we're eager to work with the city to craft a human health and safety buffer that is protective of our communities and that will withstand legal liability and uh, financial challenges. Because we want to ensure that this policy is both protective and successful, we've invested in legal research. We support the findings of Shoot Mahali. We find that a reasonable amortization period would not infringe on vested property rights and would not present a takings issue. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, Eric. Good afternoon, council members. Eric Roman uh, from the Stand LA Coalition. Um, we are 
uh, we honestly can't believe that it took 630 days and that we had to uh, organize for that long to get this report released, um, the Petroleum Administrator's report on oil and gas, but we're pleased that it's finally out and we're eager to get to work with all of you to make this policy happen. Um, as my colleague mentioned, we are definitely concerned um, by some of the recommendations in the report that uh, honestly uh, feel like they're more aimed at in, uh, ensuring that the oil industry and mineral rights holders uh, are made whole and that are protected, um, and also putting off action rather than moving quickly uh, protect our residents. That being said, we know this council, uh, beginning with this committee, um, is capable of providing the kind of bold leadership that we need on this issue um, to craft a policy that can protect public health um, and the health of our residents that are uh, especially vulnerable residents living near these sites um, that can uh, trans continue our transition off of fossil fuels and also ensure uh, impacted workers uh, are made whole. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, Jed, did you, uh, you're a multiple speaker, right? Yes. So, you, what items are you speaking on? Um, all of them in general public comment. Okay, so you got three minutes, two minutes for your, uh, all the items and your one minute of general public comment. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, Jed Perriott with the Services Not Sweeps Coalition. Um, I'm here first to support uh, item seven, the pilot program to take a new approach to providing public health resources to unhoused community members. Um, with the caveat though that you do not involve LAPD in any way. Um, and this is something we have been telling you. The mayor's office has actually agreed with us that they're willing to try this. Um, just witnessed last week in Venice, an un unhoused man in Venice was shot by LAPD uh, multiple times, unarmed. Um, why we, we wait for answers, but this is just one example of why police only escalate uh, these situations. And, um, and the other thing I'd like to talk about here, so we're, we're here to hear a report from the uh, Department of Sanitation, and I'd like to give you a report from the ground. I, I demand answers about some things. I was hoping Councilmember O'Farrell will be here today to uh, answer some questions I have, but he is not, um, conveniently. Um, so Clean Streets LA, recently there was uh, money allocated for overtime leading up to the rollout of the CARE program. Overtime sweeps, they are sweeps. I don't care what you all want to call them. Right now they're still sweeps. That's what we're seeing on the ground. At Alvarado 101 this past week, on Saturday, August 10th, a Clean Streets LA notice cleanup happened. Um, they needed it, there were piles of trash. They needed really regular trash service, which is what we've been advocating for. Um, but they got a Clean Streets LA sweep, all their stuff was moved off the block, um, and, and the whole area was cleaned. But just three days later, they got another Clean Streets LA sweep. And, and I'm trying to figure out, we're all trying to ask why. Because you all say that, that these sweeps in 5611 is to make sure there's clean and passable sidewalks and to remove trash. You know, I was there the day that this, this second sweep was noticed, quote unquote, because the notices for Tuesday were put up right next to ones that said Saturday. Just a bunch of white pieces of paper with different days and dates. The encampment members there, by the way, say they put notices up all the time and never show up. So is it happening? Could, it, could this really be happening again? There's clean and passable sidewalks. There's no trash. There's brand new tents that people have because they had some of them thrown out on Saturday. So why was this happening? Well, I went and I demanded answers from Mitchell Farrell's office because some community members there, some elderly folks with wheelchairs and canes were crying. Uh, thinking that they may have to move their stuff in the summer heat again. So Mitchell Farrell's uh, field deputy, Juan Forgoso, stared at me with his soulless eyes as I told him about Sarah and Robert Martinez, who has a cane, and just said, oh, if it was noticed, they should be ready. No care at all for the community members in Echo Park. None at all. I'm talking about clean streets, I like El Cedillo, and the violations that happened in Echo Park this week. And by the way, uh, Mayor Martinez, in your district as well, though I was not present, but what we witnessed was uh, a Clean Streets LA sweep that had nothing to do with public health and safety whatsoever. The watershed folks who were there agree with me it should be called off, but they said they couldn't call it off because they were told to go through. And it is well documented, multiple tents thrown out, people's medications, IDs thrown in the garbage. You endanger people's lives. So you ask yourself why you're getting sued over and over again? Once again, you're giving us more and more evidence every day. Thank you, sir. Uh, Peggy? Uh, let me, give me just one second. Let me call a couple of more members. Ali, Herman, Dan, and Corey. Corey S. Is anyone here with that name? Uh, they're, they're they're all over. These are all multiple cards now. Corey, are you here? Are you, is that your name? Okay. Uh, Peggy, what items are do you want to speak on? Uh, well, I don't see how I can speak to four if the update hasn't been, verbal update hasn't been given. Can we I take come up, back to that? No, we, come, we take up all public comments. I picked four, uh, six, 
seven, and general public. All right, thank you. So you have three minutes, two minutes for all your items, and your one minute of general public comment. Go ahead. Okay, so I'm going to, uh, I guess I'll just start with number four. Uh, uh, you know, it would be nice if we don't have the LAPD standing over uh, poor unhoused women who are under the threat of law, have moments, minutes to pick their stuff up and put it in a garbage bag and move it when there's not even trash around them. I'd really like to get the LAPD out of this. It's not positive and it threatens people and it escalates problems. You don't have to listen. Um, <laughs> So, um, you know, it looks like you're thinking of hiring some people um, in, uh, in Venice. What they've done is they've hired some unhoused people, which is great for the clean streets part, but they're working for uh, almost no money, and they're living in tents. I run a clinic, a free, I help run a free clinic, a legal clinic for unhoused people in Venice. And our last clinic, two of those employees came to us with tickets from getting from their tents or something, 5611 tickets. So if you're going to hire people off the street, give them a real job, not a crappy job that they can't even get in a, a, a rent a room in. So if you're going to hire people, hire them in real jobs. Like for, and not to say that I approve of what sanitation does, but at least they have a union. Get them hired by sanitation. If you're going to hire unhoused people, give them a real chance. And um, also for public comment, I'd like to tell you that I have a complaint right now, and I'd like to lodge that with you officially in my verbal comment, public comment, is that when these sanitation sweeps, whatever you call them, clean, whatever, they're sweeps, and they throw away belongings. And when they throw these belongings away, it's not just all the horrible things they do to the unhoused people, but what they're doing to the environment. They throw away electronic equipment all the time. Now, I, I recycle my electronic equipment that I don't use anymore, but the city sanitation does not. Every time I take pictures of them throwing away, crushing them in the trash trucks, going to a landfill that should not, it is a violation of environmental policy to throw away electronic equipment, crush it, and take it to a landfill. You have to take it to a special place. I take it to a special place. I think the city could do that too. And not to mention when they're throwing all these belongings away, they're throwing away perfectly good bicycles, shopping carts, and things that don't need, including homeless people's recycling, for God's sakes. They're crushing it. It's all going to a landfill besides the environmentally hazardous items. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Herman. Woo! Can you give me uh, the items he's speaking on? She wants to know what items you're speaking on. Uh, I signed up on all items like I do at all meetings according to the jackass attorney up there. Well, just a second, <laughs> Mr. Herman. Okay. <laughs> okay you're speaking on um, all items including general public yeah. comment. Go ahead. Yeah. So you see I found the acronym for... B-O-S, bastard of shit, Jose Weezar. What has he done to the cleanest project ever? Nothing. He eliminated us from sleeping on our sidewalk and streets after that bitch O'Farrell made the same rude mistake out there in Venice Beach on item number seven. It talks about motion of Bonin and his little fucking Chongo's hand washing stations. I don't want a station. I want a room where I can fucking bathe and wash my nuts like you. In addition to that, I found another acronym for Homeless Outreach Proactive Engagement called LA Hose. Well, I know what a hoe looks like because every time I walk into LA, I come across a bunch of hoes, and I try to figure out why I'm so homeless over these hoes. See, hoes make money. I don't make no money being homeless, except I stick my trash illegally in dumping 
on the sidewalk streets of LA called hoes. But you people take disregard for that because you find my illegal dumping rude and shrewd according to item number five, Miss Martinez. And then I went into item number six, another acronym for LLCP, which stands for Losers Litter Cleanup Response Program. There, Mr. Jew Bloomfield, the nigger, tells his wife that why should we employ homeless people if we don't have a union to represent them? And I said, right, nigs, I want representation for employment with fair $50 an hour so I could pay my fucking rent. Now my general public comment. Just last week, some jackass by the name of Paul Kokorian made a, made a remark that I was making animal noises during a public meeting. Well, normally I do make animal noises because I tend to have a tendency to act stupid what an asshole who doesn't have a bar license anymore. So he's just as equally stupid as I am, the fucking Armenian. In addition to that, you know, if I had big arms that I could flap around City Hall, I'd fucking slap the nig if I could, but I'm not because that's a threat. But if I could be like Walter Edward Bagsonarian, I'd put that fucking 50 caliber to that stupid attorney Mike Fears office for washing fucking urine and feces into the street, you fucking assholes. Fuck you. Next speaker is Dan. Yeah. Hi, Hold Daniel Gus. I write a column in uh, City Watch LA. Hold on for just a second. Sure. You know what items you... I, yeah, can you? six, seven in general. Okay, go uh, ahead. Council members, you have uh, six and seven or two superficially great ideas. A few months ago, I wrote a column about, uh, a complimentary column about Bob Blumenfield when he cracked down on um, handicapped parking abuse. So I'm willing and I've proven that I will, that I'll, that I'll write positive uh, uh, columns. The reason why I won't write a positive column about these two generally good ideas is because you ignore questions on the more serious, the more contentious issues. So if you guys want to engage on subjects, I'd be thrilled to write about paying homeless people to do um, trash pickup. I'd be thrilled to write about washing and showering stations. But if you don't field questions about the controversial stuff, there's no way I'm going to write good subjects about the good things you do. Regarding the, uh, the homeless individuals picking up the loose litter, it's a great idea, but please make sure that you're paying them enough so that the pay that they get for this work is substantial. Uh, it's a great idea. And there are piles of trash that I've brought to your attention, especially in Ms. Martinez's district, that have been ignored. It's a great idea. I'd like to write about it. But if you ignore the contentious subjects, I'm not going to write about a good subject like item number six. With regard to item number seven, you are bringing the services to people in the most desirable areas of the city. You should be bringing the services and making life more accommodating for people in less desirable areas of the city. Venice is key to tourism. Venice is key to the more affluent parts of the city. You are making CD11 more inviting to come to. You're accommodating being homeless in CD11. I, I agree with what you have in, in item seven, but you're making it more accommodating for one of the most important districts in terms of tourism. And the city's, you know, you have nothing if you don't have tourism here. Uh, general public comment. Uh, you have another crisis that I'm going to be writing about soon in terms of children being used for panhandling on the subway. I have shown photos of children being used for panhandling on exit ramps, in the subways, and elsewhere throughout the city. Last week, and I believe I cc'd Mr. Kikorian about this, the scourge of people using animals on freeway exit ramps and on medians in blazing hot heat needs to be outlawed. I understand that certain parts of exit ramps or free sides of freeways are Caltrans. You should work on strict and enforced rules about children and animals being exploited for panhandling. Mr. Corrett saw the photos. I got no response on it. I'm going to be writing about that soon. And again, if you engage on the contentious subjects, I'd be more inclined to publicize the good things you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ali, give me just a second. Corey Schmidt. <laughs> 
Wayne Spindler <coughs> and Craig R. Go ahead, Ali. Are you speaking on three items? Or two uh, items and four, four and seven. Okay. Go ahead. My name is Allie, I live in CD13, and I work in Venice at Venice Community Housing, and also am a member of the Services Not Sweeps Coalition. Should I be sitting next to you? Uh, item number four discusses the transition of this new deployment model. However, we have yet to see, we have seen very little evidence of any of these enhanced uh, deployment efforts. Specifically in Venice, there have been even worse violations recently. A few weeks ago, I, wa I walked past the encampment on 3rd and Rose, um, right after one of the regularly scheduled Friday sweeps. All of the residents of that encampment had been forced to move. Caution tape was blocking off the whole area. Um, there were both squad cars and Department of Sanitation vehicles present. However, no actual sidewalk or street cleaning occurred. Um, at the end of the day, there was still garbage and litter everywhere. The only thing that I noticed was that the garbage cans had been empty, but all those folks had been forced to move um, seemingly for nothing. Uh, I've heard similar stories like this from our partners across the city, and there must be accountability for these actions. The city cannot continue the same old programs that have failed and must implement a true public health approach in these and other related efforts. The other item I'm here for is number seven. Um, and I support this proposed pilot and any other projects that implement the Services Not Sweeps platform. However, I do have some reservations seeing how current programs that were supposed to provide clean streets and improve health conditions for unhoused people have failed thus far. This project and others like it must also remove LAPD from the teams and process entirely. Otherwise, criminalization, harassment, and intimidation will continue and other outreach efforts will not work. We support the pilot project moving forward, incorporating our Services Not Sweep platform, but also must stress that this committee and the city need to fix the problem citywide to meet public health needs and end criminalization and civil rights violations. Thank you. Next speaker is um, Corey. Uh, Corey Schmidt, for the record. Uh, what items are you speaking on? You're speaking on? Three, four, five. Looks like it's all items, including general public comment. Yeah. Um, okay, so for number three in regards to opening in the park in Rowena, um, I'm supported this. Um, number four and five for illegal dumping reward program, um, I say no, uh, just more uh, uh, outreach in regards to free pickup. I believe we have free pickup through 311, um, so just more outreach with that would make the problem easier and you know help people that have uh, problems finding a way to get rid of their stuff. Um, number six, in regards to employing homeless to clean up the loose litter, um, I actually think this is a great idea, um, but uh, some of the other speakers brought up a good point of, of pay, so um, make sure that they're actually getting paid well, but I, uh, I think that's a good idea. Um, and then number seven, in regards to hygiene stations with attendants and showers, I also think that's a great idea, so just want to give my input on that. Okay, that's it? Yep. All right, thank you very much. Next speaker is Wayne Spinner, followed by Craig. So, yes, so we're going to go puppetless today. Yes, yeah, so that, Paul Koretz knows what's going to happen. That, that's when the shit flies, man. So, number four, the BOS is at it again. Officially, the Bureau of Shit. And the livability services, all bullshit. Ain't no livability here. Look at all these FBI targets. Look at them. They're down and they got their little heads down. Oh, all of Paul Koretz is paying attention because he's working his paperwork on his deal with the feds. He's going to rat out Herb Wesson and take a suspended sentence. I, I really admire that. You need to speak uh, to the yeah, I know, I know little cunt. Okay, so number five, motion for the little cunt relative to instructing the Bureau of Shit in conjunction with the city attorney who's full of shit. Also, by the way, suspected mail fraud by the city clerk. We're going to get to that tomorrow. And other departments involved in the illegal dump and reward program. Yes, I like this idea. Let's go ahead and dump. And then, my, see, see, this is what, what Paul Krikorian did to make all his money. See, he gets his brother to come out and dump, and then he comes back and complains, and he picks up the reward, and the garbage gets picked up by the city. Can't you see it, fool? 
this is all the same ghetto garbage that they brought from the city of San Fernando when the criminal Nori Martinez used to be mayor of San Fernando. She simply brought her ghetto, she brought her bitches, and she brought her home mentality, yes. And like number five, that's right. So that's why I say fuck number five, and fuck number four, and fuck number three, and especially fuck number two, because we don't need none of this shit. So now, so the cunt don't throw me out, I'll get to my general comment. Did you know that they broke quorum on this meeting today? Did you know that Mary so fucking fat and fucking stupid that she didn't recess the meeting first to let Mr. Koretz use the bathroom. Did you know that once Mr. Koretz left the meeting that she could not hear this meeting? Did you know that 54950 of the Brown Act states that if you're not listening to the meeting and you're outside the meeting, you break the quorum? So the quorum's broken. There's no votes that can be done. It's not enough dumb nerdy for the guy to come back in after using the crapper. Everybody knows it. Now, Paul Krikorian, he know it, but the bar took his license away from him three fucking times. Yes, sir. Disbarred three times because he's so fucking stupid. No, he's so stupid. The only smart one is Gil Sedilio because his daughter's now on the, on the mail of Bontabello. Good You're going. Done. It's right. You're done. Craig, give me just a second. Let me. Cut that. I know that was a lot. Give me time to recover. Yeah, you got. Yeah, you're telling me you need time to recover. I wish people were that brave outside of this um, committee. Um, let's go ahead um, and talk. Let me ask Audrey George. Are you here, Audrey? You want to come up, ma'am? Adam Smith. Dennis Gleason, here yes, you are, sir. Dennis. And Eugene, is Eugene here? You're surrounded. You guys look familiar. There is not. I'm sorry, Eugene. Uh, just wait after after we're done with one. Did you want to say something, Mr. Correct? Yeah, I just wanted to note that uh, Mr. Spindler and Mr. Herman have been making animal noises, side comments, motions, and doing whatever they could to okay, distract. One more the, disruption, and you'll be dismissed out of this committee, gentlemen. Uh, the next speaker, go ahead. Yeah, Craig R., Los Angeles Community Action Network, LA Can. Just wanted to make a few comments about four, five, six, and seven. Um, I'm a little confused about uh, the confusion out in the streets that we see about the posting of uh, notices for uh, sweeps operations and cleanups. Uh, there's been a lot of incidents recently in Skid Row and incidents uh, in Venice as well concerning the um, misposting of uh, times and days. And uh, I think that should be straightened out before you get into uh, co verbal commitments by uh, the Bureau of Sanitation ab about uh, enhanced deployment efforts and uh, uh, new deployment models. The only new deployment model you need is to stop the smash and grab techniques of LAPD by removing law enforcement from all cleanup operations in the entire city of Los Angeles. Um, I would normally be in favor of uh, the uh, illegal dumping reward program, except I'm mindful of the possibility of the use of um, closed circuit television surveillance cameras, or as we like to refer to them in the Stop LAPD Spying Coalition, the favorite tool of the National Security Surveillance Police State. Um, on number six, I am of course for uh, employing the homeless in uh, the litter cleanup program, as long as it's in a, you know, as everybody's pointed out, a correct wage and uh, done properly. It's a good idea, but of course the devil is always in the details. And that goes as well for uh, number seven. Um, the devil is in the details about uh, the idea of uh, the idea of a uh, 
District 11 Venice-based services, hygiene services. It's a great idea on its face, and uh, I, I don't respect the objection that the gentleman earlier made about um, it's making it homelessness too nice for them in Venice and will attract people. Uh, so what do you propose instead, to beat them with whips, to discourage them from coming to Venice? It's, rid it's a ridiculous train of logic. So we should have uh, additional uh, services, air quotes, which are really just uh, sweeps, but we need the services enhanced by uh, attendance, and it would be good anywhere in the city. Thanks, Craig. But no LAPD. Thanks, Craig. Thank you. Uh, next speaker is um, Audrey. You're speaking on three items? Yes. Um, all three items actually do address issues of homelessness, and I do want to also disagree with that other um, person in terms of accommodating homelessness. It's a, it's a ridiculous concept. As long as there's poverty and racism, there will be homeless people. Where they are will depend on, um, you know, the level of criminalization and, um, and the policies of the city and the county. But there will, you, accommodating them is not, a, is not um, going to increase the level of homelessness um, and welcome them to places. Uh, their lives are so hard unhoused people. It's not anything that people choose. Um, regarding number four, um, I, do, I did want to just briefly mention that the illegal dumping is mostly from businesses and not from homeless people. Um, and that I, I just ask that in all of these livability services, any of these um, programs for outreach and engagement and cleanup, that they, um, they don't have cops involved. There are models. There are models that are successful and helpful that do not involve cops, like the, I think it's called the 3C model is one of them. I just urge for, for that, for all of these items, that that be considered. Uh, for number six, yes, um, that's a, it's a good plan to, um, to employ homeless individuals. But in addition to wages, which is super important, in encampments, you've got to realize that um, houseless people, given a few minor, you know, basic tools, clean them, clean up their own. Uh, they don't need training. You don't need to waste resources training some, them to do something they already know how to do. Um, number seven, I'm, uh, once again, if you take cops out of it, I would definitely support the motion. You've got to stop confiscating, you've got to stop destroying, and you've got to stop criminalizing. And take the cops out of it and just think about John Penny, a houseless person, staying in a place where he was given permission by an owner, totally unarmed, um, a black man who, um, who had sought refuge in a place where he was allowed to be, huddled before being shot, huddled in a corner surrounded by six to eight cops. I'm not sure. Ten. Ten? Ten cops. Ten cops where they, and he was like, you know, 5'11", uh, I heard, and like 140 pounds maximum, and, and they had to shoot him. So you, the cops should not have been first responders at all in that, and they need to be out of all of these different programs. Thank you. Thank you, Audrey. Um, Adam, you. Adam, followed by Dennis, followed by Eugene. Is Jose Hernandez here? Jose? You want to come up? Did you fill out a card to speak? You did, right? Yeah. All right. Go ahead, Adam. Um, yeah, my name's Adam Smith. I'm a volunteer organizer with a group called White People for Black Lives. I'm a volunteer with the Human Rights or Human and Civil Rights Committee at LA Can. I'm a volunteer with the Services Not Sweeps Coalition. I'm a volunteer with Street Watch LA. Um, this morning I spent the morning across the street at Police Commission to lift up the name of John Penny, who Audrey just mentioned, a houseless black person in Venice who was shot and almost killed by LAPD on Wednesday. Um, I've been doing outreach in Venice and CD11 and CD5 um, for about seven years, and we've seen this before. We've seen the shooting of Brendan Glenn. We've seen the shooting of Shakespeare by a 
local security guard acting as a proxy for the police. We saw the shooting of Jason Davis on Rose Ave. Um, so the way that LAPD interacts with houseless people isn't new. Um, that's why you, you're getting so many people saying that there is no way to do these cleanups uh, in a healthy, in a humane way with houseless people if the cops are involved. Um, I really, I'm glad that Mr. Bonin and Mr. Harris Dawson have put this motion forward. Again, time will tell what it means. Um, we know that a lot of the problems, a lot of the complaints from CD5 and CD11, specifically underneath the 405 on Venice Boulevard, are from a lack of services, a lack of bathrooms, a lack of trash receptacles. Um, that sweep, um, that encampment on Venice Boulevard underneath the 405 is one that I try to visit every week before the sweep to help people move their stuff. That happened this morning while I was at police commission. I'm used to talking over my kids, so it's fine. I got one. Um, Not a problem. But, so I wasn't there this morning at that sweep. People moved with volunteers from Street Watch. People moved people's stuff off that block into an alley where they usually do. Up to 12 people lost their stuff this morning. We're paying these salaries out of a budget that says it's for homelessness and we're using banishment, we're using criminalization, and we're seeing, we're using bullets by the LAPD to control and otherize a population that needs services. I mean, this stuff just keeps happening. Every day this stuff happens. Now I just put out a call on Facebook to raise money again to buy new tents for people. Like, throwing away people's shit is not going to solve homelessness. Mm. Pretending homelessness is illegal is not going to solve homelessness. Mm. They do need bathrooms because that's where a lot of the calls come from, the complaints. But like, our council district members, they need to speak to house residents and be like, the issue isn't that these people are a mess. These people need services. Everyone needs to get together and, do, and push for the same things that we're all pushing for. Thanks, Adam. Thanks. Dennis? Uh, what item are you speaking on, Dennis? Item six? Item six. All right, go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair, honorable members. Dennis Gleason from the Office of Councilman Joe Buscaino. Um, I'd like to thank the chair for scheduling this item. We first introduced this motion in September of 2017 with a very simple idea, which was finding a way to provide job opportunities and training for those experiencing homelessness um, that's in some sort of public serving capacity. Um, I'd like to thank Wilson Poon and Meg Barclay from the CAO's office who've been instrumental in getting this program together and to this point, as well as Michael Graf Weisner and Trevor Kale from Chrysalis. Trevor is here and he's available to answer any questions that you may have, and I'm available to answer any specific questions you may have as well. Just wanna say thank you. We think this is a great program. We'd love to advance it forward. Thank you, Dennis. Um, next speaker is Eugene, and you signed up for one item as well? I've signed up for uh, six, but yeah, um, six. I think I meant to put in seven, but I could briefly write on, uh, so you, speak up. you want to speak I on seven? Yeah, I could, okay. I could speak ahead. on seven, but I could also speak on six, but you I could get- You can speak on I mean, seven, your time is, go ahead. Yeah, um, as far as uh, services uh, uh, go, I, I do think that, um, you know, providing the homeless with, uh, you know, restrooms and uh, sanitation and things of that nature and also mental health care and health care in general is a priority. I don't think that the police have any role or business being on the streets. They do not help the situation. All they do is make a bad situation worse. Yesterday I experienced, uh, as I got off the uh, Metrolink on Wilshire, a officer basically, two officers uh, harassing a homeless man whose only crime was falling asleep. And the officers who I had uh, uh, this discussion with, uh, did not even know that the MTA was public property. They thought it was private property, and because it was private property, he did not have a right to fall asleep. And because he fell asleep, they put him in handcuffs, and they ultimately, uh, you know, send in a cop car to uh, put out a warrant for him. So I am asking you guys to actually provide services uh, that help the homeless as opposed to pushing this can along the line. Thank you. Thank down you. the road, excuse me. Um, the other, your, Jose? What item are you speaking on? Uh, item two. Okay, go ahead. Uh, 
Jose Hernandez, uh, CD14 field deputy, but also a constituent of Highland Park, which is the northeast area that this, uh, this is addressing. So for the last few years, our office has been fighting against the expansion of Shoal Canyon due to the spewing of methane gas. Uh, unfortunately, the city of Glendale hasn't really taken up much consideration on our input that we've provided. So um, we would like um, this to pass um, just so we can formalize some sort of a relationship with the city family to come and then submit some comments on the environmental impact report that's going to be done. Just a brief detail on why it's important. Uh, so I won't go into further details. It'll be quick. Uh, city of Glentella hired a third, third, uh, third uh, party consultant, uh, Stantit, that, that did a mitigated ne ne negative declaration. Um, the City of Glendale Planning Commission actually rejected it um, and asked for a further EIR to be released. But that same uh, third party consultant will be the one doing that same EIR. So we're asking the city to um, put some pressure on it um, by having the Bureau of Sanitation provide some comments on the EIR that will be released later this year. You're out of time and the clock stopped working. So I'm sorry I had to stop. Sorry you. about that. Um, thank right. you very much. Thank you very much. There are no other speakers. On any of our items, members, or general public comments, so I'm going to go ahead and close that for this meeting. Uh, public comment is now closed. Members, um, I move to approve items number two and three on consent. Is there any objection? Seeing none, that will be the order. Let's go ahead and take up item number four. This is a verbal update on Clean Street Hope Program. Can you please read that into the record? Certainly, Madam Chair. Item number four relates to a verbal update from the Bureau of Sanitation relative to livability services efforts, including the Clean Streets LA, homeless outreach, and uh, proactive engagement. Uh, okay, we have Mr. Garcia, Mr. Orozco, Mr. Medina. <coughs> so sanitation, so before we went on summer briefings, this council moved to approve the new deployment model for addressing cleanliness in our streets. Um, uh, guys, I just need you we need to continue our meeting. If you can just lower your voices, I'd really appreciate that. Um, and so, again, this is, um, at this time, I'm asking us, uh, you to inform this, um, this body in terms of the progress that we've made um, to be able to meet our October 1st deadline for deployment. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. So we're here to report on the care deployment, uh, staffing and facilities, and along with equipment. Um, the uh, overtime that was funded to uh, continue the effort to uh, uh, curb illegal dumping and uh, the enforcement and investigations uh, and to follow up with the hygiene centers along with the plan for staffing and the unit the unit acquisition so uh, with that I'll turn it over to um, the manager over LSD uh, Gabriel Miranda and he'll report on a few of these items Great, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair, Council Members. Uh, Gabe Miranda, LA Sanitation. Um, so as Pepe alluded to, we are on track for our care launch in October 1st. Uh, we are currently still working on the hiring process of the 47 new positions. So just a quick update on that. Um, 18 emergency appointment environmental compliance inspectors, uh, job offers have been made and accepted. Uh, 13 refuse collection truck operators are uh, being hired as a means of transfer through the collections operations. Uh, 13 maintenance laborers are currently being hired through the targeted local hiring process. And three senior environmental compliance inspectors um, are in the process of being hired to provide adequate oversight of the 30 Care and Care Plus teams citywide. Um, training is scheduled and ready to start uh, in September. Uh, so we're on pace and on track for the hiring and training of the 47 new positions. All right. As it relates to the facilities for the regional deployment, uh, we are on track for that as well. I'm currently working on the construction at the Harbor site as well as the San Fernando site. Um, both temporary trailers are gonna be used at each of these facilities as the construction for the permanent facilities are uh, being constructed. Um, we're also looking at utilizing uh, Donald C. Tillman, which is our plant in the valley. Um, there's currently a trailer there that is available, so we are going to MFC at the end of the month at looking at possibly leasing or purchasing that trailer, which would allow for a nudgeal, another regional deployment site in the valley. 
So come October 1st, uh, the harbor facility, as long as the Washington Yard, uh, the San Fernando site, and DC Tillman will all be operable by October 1st. Um, we are going to be using the East Valley Collection Facility while uh, Lopez Canyon is under construction. So Lopez Canyon is we're about 12 months away from that permanent site being completed. And quickly on the overtime funding, um, we have been performing enhanced illegal dumping services citywide uh, with the funding that was provided. Uh, the deployment model consisted of utilizing clean stat data as well as service request data, which determined chronic dumping in high need locations. Uh, the metrics compiled so far for the month of July from 2019 as a comparison to 2018, we went from 917 tons to 1,817 tons. So we almost doubled the amount of tonnage that we removed from the public right away as it relates to illegal dumping with the enhanced uh, overtime funding. Uh, we also produced uh, 1,600 proactive service requests. So part of the proactive work is not just being referral based through MyLA, but we have crews canvassing certain areas that have chronic dumping and responding to these areas regardless if a service request is present or not. Um, so based on the current expenditures of the funding, um, we're looking at exhausting the funds by the end of this month. Um, with that, Madam Chair, um, so what Mr. Miranda stated is that 1,600 proactive, meaning unreported, we visually went out there and actually addressed um, illegal dumping as, as it sits, but we also uh, fulfilled 1,300 actual service requests from uh, constituents reporting. So the, the efforts of, or the uh, utilization of the overtime, it, it, it serves the purpose of uh, not only meeting the commitments from the constituents who have put in a request and are we, uh, expecting our services to be uh, fulfilled, but an additional 1,600 uh, ser service locations in between the ones that were actually reported were fulfilled, uh, thus giving us the opportunity to double our uh, the tonnage and the efforts that we did. Um, with that, in, in order to, uh, to continue this and um, be ready for October 1st, we're asking for a uh, uh, a possible additional funding of 350000 to cover the balance of August in September and getting ready for October 1st. Um, with that, I'll turn it over to uh, Domingo Orozco to uh, follow up on the hygiene center. So you have to repeat this like one more time, Pepe. So you're asking for an additional $350,000 between now and October on top of what we have already allocated for overtime? We've, uh, we're, we're, on, we're on track to exhaust what, you, uh, what was allocated to us. Of, uh, I think it was a little over $740,000. Mm -hmm. So um, was there a miscalculation on your part? Pardon me? Was there a miscalculation on your part, or why are you no, asking for additional money? We, we had uh, originally asked for, I think, Enrique asked for two, uh, 2 $2.1 million, but I think it was reduced to $1.4. And then I think when it all came down to it, uh, 700 and a little over 740 was actually provided to continue the overtime or to continue the from July 1st to uh, October, the illegal dumping cleanups to maintain the, the pace. So the 2.5 was the projection to get the work done. Pardon me? Yeah. 2.5 was the initial projection. Was the initial request. And we, and we allocated one4 no, I, well, we, we, uh, we requested half, and then we were only given half of that. <laughs> so in order to continue this trend of uh, picking up proactive inserts and additional tonnage and maintaining the efforts uh, uh, in lieu of October 1st, uh, this is what we calculate would carry us to October 1st. All right, so you're going to bring that back because we're not taking, this is just simply an update. This is, we're not taking any action okay. this afternoon. Uh, I we'll guess go. we can discuss that. I just wanted to make sure I heard you correctly. You want to go ahead? Yes. <coughs> Madam Chair, Council Members, Domingo Orozco, Ali San here to discuss mobile hygiene units. Ali San has secured the first unit with expected delivery in mid-September for operational deployment beginning in October 1st. <coughs> This unit will be piloted with the Care Plus team that will be deployed to comprehensive cleanup locations. This will help uh, by providing a critically needed resource. 
Um, in addition, we are looking at a model where we can utilize a community benefits organization to provide more of the social services that will come along with deploying this mobile hygiene unit. Uh, we're also looking for a model to secure additional funding and also procurement of additional units for use citywide with our Care Plus teams uh, that will be deployed for comprehensive cleanups. Uh, we're preparing to further report on this in the future, and we're here happy to answer any questions that you may have. Do you have any other, uh, yeah. any other thing to add? Yes, I'm, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Gonzalo uh, Barriga to uh, give a little snapshot on the enforcement and investigation component of what we've been uh, able to accomplish. Good afternoon, Madam Chair and Honorable Committee. Uh, Gonzalo Barriga, Assistant Chief, Valley Sanitation and Environment. Uh, just a quick update for the downtown LA area. Um, we increased our numbers and uh, enforcement efforts down there and wrote approximately between the month of June and July 129 citations um, in and around illegal dumping, anywhere from best, poor best management practices to littering, etc. Again, that's the downtown area, which is the freeway court, um, all four sides on the freeway, the 101, the 10, uh, the 110, and the 5. So. Um, Prior to that, we had written 25 citations from January to May. So you can see the increased efforts that we put in downtown and the, the, the big effort. Um, staff are reporting that they're seeing much more compliance and less dumping going on over the course of the last eight weeks. Uh, citywide, uh, for the month of uh, June and July, we wrote approximately 240 ticket citations. Uh, that was citywide. That includes the downtown LA numbers. Uh, so we've increased our number citywide, um, and uh, the teams are, are, are able to enforce it. Again, these are criminal citations uh, where they have to report to a court and judge and pay a fine. This includes misdemeanors. There's also warning tickets that the staff do also issue. Um, uh, in regards to surveillance, we are uh, identifying locations within the downtown LA area and citywide using data and information from complaints that received from uh, constituents and other law enforcement agencies to install surveillance cameras focused only on that specific area trying to capture businesses or contractors and individuals dumping in uh, illegal dumping hotspots throughout the city. So I can uh, get into further detail if, uh, if there's any other questions. All right, anything else? Uh, just uh, along with that enforcement and all the illegal dumping that we've uh, We've been able to refer a lot of those to the uh, Recicla um, ECI's environmental compliance to make sure that the businesses are in compliance with having a, a trash provider associated to their businesses. But uh, no, other than that, we don't have anything else unless you have any questions for us. Members, do you have any questions? Mr. Kukorn? Just, I, just on the illegal dumping and then um, if you could circle back to me. So, 240 citations were written citywide. Can you talk a little bit more specifically about to whom those citations were written? Were these predominantly to businesses and contractors? So um, let me get into the statistics. So for uh, June and July, for June, we wrote 69 um, infractions, one misdemeanor, and 69 warning citations. Uh, for July, we wrote, and I'm sorry, and June, we had one misdemeanor filing. For July, we had two misdemeanor filings, 58 infractions, and 41 warning citations. Those citations went to mostly businesses and or businesses that weren't, that, that did not have a, uh, a brick and mortar facility, but were uh, illegally dumping or, and or littering or having poor best management practices, um, <coughs> all of those of the above. So um, if if I can speak particularly to a specific question, um, every one of those people were identified on the citation. Okay. Well, I, I guess the question most people would have about that dumping situation is, is it a illegal dumping problem caused by businesses, or is this an issue relating to our homeless <coughs> population? And this is the discussion that has been had in the press, and many of the people who spoke in public comment talked about that. What I'm hearing you saying is that the enforcement has been predominantly against businesses that are engaged in illegal dumping. If, if I were to answer right now, based on the information I have, I would say a majority, if not all of them, yes. Okay. And now... Um, so have we correlated those who are doing the illegal dumping with those who do not have a current 
uh, trash pickup contract under so, um Yeah, so we had a downtown LA plan that we proposed. I mean, there's a lot of details, so I'll speak to that right now. We worked with franchise or recycler folks, and for the first six to eight weeks, we had um, recycler inspectors with us, and we are sharing the information for the citations at every single location with our recycler folks, and then they they do a query in their database, and, and if they need to, they, they do immediately uh, deal with that situation um, to uh, make sure that the trash hauling or the, basically the recycling ordinance is enforced. Okay, and so just, and then what's the follow-up to ensure that that business has a valid or a current trash contract that they aren't engaging in this continuing pattern of So I would, I would, I could you. speak to that, but I would rather that um, the manager for the recycling um, division I can, turn, I can call on Dan Myers, manager for the recycler program to uh, speak on that on the process for the follow-up to those citations good afternoon Dan Myers LA sanitation uh, we have a, uh, a process that we go through when we're working with businesses that we've identified that do not have uh, solid waste service um, we start typically by engaging them, making sure they understand the, the, the rules and necessity for have, have solid waste service. We give them um, typically a week to, to gain, uh, gain service. Uh, we work with our service providers to also work with them on service. We follow up after a week. If they still don't have service, they're issued a notice of violation of Municipal Code 66.03 that requires them to have service. We, again, give them a chance to subscribe. They don't subscribe. Uh, we, again, uh, we follow up with a notification letting them know that they will be referred to the city attorney's office for, for prosecution. Um, uh, failure to have solid waste service is a violation of the municipal code, which is which carries with it a misdemeanor uh, violation, a uh, thousand dollar fine, and or up to six months in jail. Um, so they're they're notified of the necessity for compliance. If they still don't comply, those cases are referred to the city attorney's office for for prosecution. Okay. So with this much welcomed increase in enforcement, uh, which is, I'm really, uh, we're all very pleased to hear this, but um, did I understand that there's only been one misdemeanor filing out of all of those 240 citations? Um, so for, uh, let me pull that number up, I'm sorry. Uh, I believe that there's three. Uh, so for June and July, we had three misdemeanor filings um, as in whole. So that Basically, we, ha we were able to collect enough evidence to take it to that level, as you know. Okay. But uh, we have three right now. Okay. And with regard to not having a valid trash uh, very contract? Because our, our, our approach is, is complementary, but, uh, but a bit different. Illegal dumping and requirement for trash service. Uh, to date, we referred 10, uh, 10 businesses to the city attorney's office. Um, uh, We've, we've, we've gone out and we identified, we did over 500 inspections uh, just in the downtown area. Um, of those inspections, 200 of those we identified definitely needed uh, re, uh, solid waste service and did not have them. Um, of that, um, we were able to uh, get 50 of them just through working with them, notifying them to sign up for service. So. Uh, Ten of them we've referred to the, uh, the city attorney's office. We have another 80 of those that we're in the process of, of doing the official notification to in terms of referral to the city attorney's office. Um, and we're working with the balance. Um, so, so definitely movement through, through the process. Okay. Um, are there suggestions that you can offer to the committee for um, what... Uh, resources you would need in order to better prepare these cases for prosecution you mentioned it's difficult it, it's obviously difficult to gather the evidence to present these for criminal prosecution so what would help you to solve that problem so that folks who are creating these piles of trash uh, for their own profit essentially are appropriately prosecuted 
So, so number one would be staffing, uh, dedicated staffing to basically do these kinds of things and work. Um, also supporting a, uh, we did receive funding for our surveillance cameras to do illegal dumping, but we wanted a support group that would be handling like more of a te te detective role, um, looking into those cameras and then just spending time and focusing on misdemeanor and or misdemeanor wobbler files, filings for uh, criminal investigations as opposed to uh, badge staff or you know, people walking down the street trying to find a citation. Uh, a violation for a citation. So uh, if we could have dedicated staff to basically focus on misdemeanor level types of uh, criminal investigations, which uh, I believe the committee knows takes a little bit more time than just a, a ticket on the street. Um, there's a lot of interviews, there's running plates, there's going to residents, door knocking, um, locating businesses, etc. cetera. And, and obviously that, that's time consuming and basically a dedicated staffing if I were to offer my suggestion. Thank you. Mr. Corretz, you have any questions? Yeah, I think we all want to do what we can to stop illegal dumping, obviously. Can we do anything to raise the amount of rewards to help catch illegal dumpers? And is there anything we can do to increase the fines for illegal dumpers that we do catch? So we are working with the city attorney's office. You should be receiving a report back if you've not have already received that um, on enhancing and updating some ordinances, LAMC 5612, LAMC 61.07, LAMC 64.70, and LAMC 66.25 to increase all of those uh, uh, criminal infractions and fines to the maximum allowable under criminal law. Also, you'll be... Um, also, we received some information to introduce the ACE citation program, which makes stuff uh, and is a, makes violations an administrative violation as opposed to a criminal offense. And those issues would be adjudicated through uh, the city attorney's office, their uh, ACE program. And I can, I, I believe Adina would be the one, um, our city attorney's office would be the one to be able to speak to the uh, increase in fines and the ACE program. And then regarding the illegal dumping reward program, there is an illegal dumping reward program um, on the books and, 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 and has an account, et cetera, but has not been funded. Um, we're uh, inquiring what uh, the best actions um, by making visits to all of the council offices and the mayor's office on uh, basically uh, amending or maybe a tiered program, et cetera. Uh, to make it more successful, I did a search and maybe found less than five rewards issued for dumping over the last 20 years, if that. Uh, so uh, maybe an outreach campaign and maybe a tiered system for the reward program. So we really don't have a reward program right now. It exists, but it's not used. That's correct. That's correct. And are, are we, is, is anybody looking at this actively? We, we, we uh, have a report back that you'll see information regarding what some of our recommendations and uh, some of the discussion we've had from some of the council offices. Um, if you not receive that report, you, you shall be getting it very soon. Okay, we'll, we'll look for that. And what kind of proof do we require to actually uh, catch someone in the act and prosecute them? I know in, in a lot of cases the city attorney's office likes to have something actually witnessed by a city employee. Do we require that in these cases, or could, could a bystander or the homeless, pers a homeless person take video and uh, help us catch folks in the act? I believe anybody can submit information and submit for the reward. I don't believe any city employees are allowed to claim the reward. I, I think the only requirement is that the information leads to a conviction. So not necessarily a filing or a capture someone, but I think the requirement is that they actually have to be convicted to receive the award. So could we have a more robust program where we, we encourage the homeless to help us uh, video and identify people doing illegal dumping uh, in their vicinity? Yeah, that would, that would, yes, my answer would be yes to that. Um, we can engage the homeless and all in residents of the city, a lot, visitors, et cetera, I think that would be more of an outreach campaign, making sure everybody knows where to call and what kind of information is necessary to report on illegal dumping. And not, not only the pickup of the dumping, but to report that you want an investigation of that dumping to uh, identify and capture and convict an individual or a business for dumping. But it sounds like, again, currently we don't have a 
program to enlist the homeless and identifying illegal dumpers in there. I'm not yeah. aware of any outreach program, only that the program exists. I, I can say, Council Member, that anecdotally what we've seen in the field during some operations is uh, the unsheltered population will willingly provide information that they've seen in the street of businesses uh, dumping in and around their area. So we've used that uh, as at least a starting point. So they've, they've volunteered some of that information in the past. Okay, and on a slightly different subject, so if we're looking at trying to find a way to uh, to hire the homeless uh, and to have them do some cleanup activities in their own vicinity. Is there any way to transition some of those individuals into our targeted local hire program? And is that contemplated anywhere? There, there's currently a, a, um, a program um, being piloted on Skid Row, uh, a few of the streets that kind of do not have a bid attached to them. And so they are uh, re-entry program uh, type individuals that have experienced homelessness and have had some kind of criminal background. And it's all in, in parallel. Uh, they're doing the kind of, if you want to call it mentoring or kind of uh, reallocating them to a, um, to a working environment and following the rules and some education and some counseling. Um, basically the, the getting them ready to uh, participate and take part of the TLH program. So it, it's kind of a, a parallel thing um, where, where the TLH is uh, also mentoring and, and, and educating folks that are uh, wanting entry-level positions. And there is currently a program dedicated in that area to kind of uh, bridge that, that, uh, that connection. Thank you. Mr. Cedillo. Uh, the same questions in a different way. Just tell me about the local hire. What's the criteria? What's the salary? And then what's uh, you had uh, you had given out some numbers of what uh, success you've had. So if you could repeat those numbers again, I, I didn't get them all. So we are hiring um, 13 of the new maintenance laborers as part of the 47 positions through the targeted local hiring process. Um, I don't have the salaries on hand as far as the pay scale, uh, but we are going through that process now been the uh, cooperation with the unions around this um, it's been positive we've we've hired through this process uh, prior so um, we've had positive results to date thank you want to go back mr. Corn? yeah please and if I could just add to that mr. Cidio once they're in targeted local hire they're on civil service track they are you know having they're on track for a career position with the city of Los Angeles you know with all that that brings so it's this initial hiring for example with a loose litter cleanup and so is a preliminary program that hopefully will identify people who will be job ready to enter the TLH program which then will lead to a a career with all that that brings with it and so um, the problem is with targeted local hire is it is such a narrow funnel and we have so many thousands of eligible people potentially that could go into this program and we have dozens of positions available and, and we need to significantly expand the number of positions that are eligible for targeted local hire and our departments have been doing a pretty good job of trying to do that they need to do more so we need to get more people into that program if, if I can just touch on a kind of yeah. sidebar uh, to add to that uh, maintenance labor is an entry-level position but maintenance laborers, we encourage them to get credentials, meaning get licensed so they can drive a refuse collection truck. That bridge is there. So if you came in as a maintenance laborer and put in through 3LH and uh, TLH and put in a, a few years and got your credentials, then you would be in line to be an RCTO, thus leaving a gap so another TLH personnel can come in. So we've actually established uh, through the bulletin that went out for refuse collection operator, uh, this, this go around that, that eligibility or that bridge is there opening up. Because you, the, through attrition, a lot of our RCTOs have, have uh, retired, uh, promoted, and so on. So we've always had that vacancy in the classification. So uh, layman, you know, you get credentials, get your license, be qualified, and you're, uh, you're on track to becoming an RCTO. Refuse One thing that, uh, to touch on that as well, Council Member, uh, what we will be adding soon uh, with the assistance of the personnel department is the assistant environmental compliance inspector classification. 
Uh, we expect Hallelujah. to be coming back with that very, very soon. Uh, big thank you to personnel helping us move forward with that. That will also have the feeder class of maintenance labor as well. So the maintenance labor after, uh, I believe it's a year, two, years, two years, will be able to qualify for that position with some schooling and education. Then they'll be able to, as a temporary position, take the class for ECI test, which moves them up to senior ECI, chief ECI, so on and so forth. So they'll have, as a maintenance labor, a two-pronged approach to a professional career. Yeah. All of that fed through TLH. Great. A um, couple of uh, follow-ups. Um, your report mentioned the uh, restroom pilot program. And um, I, I guess what I would like to see is a strategic plan for locating permanent uh, self-cleaning toilets uh, throughout the city. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's great that the care teams are going to, you know, bring them with them. But that it, it's just a coincidence of timing of whether they happen to arrive when people have need to use them. And um, so I think that one of the big components of addressing this challenge that we continue to be missing is the, avail the ready availability of bathroom facilities throughout the city. And um, we're opening one... Uh, this week in North Hollywood, a self-cleaning uh, toilet, automatic self-cleaning uh, toilet. I think um, more of those where sanitation identifies as being the most important places is imperative. And so I I'd love to see, as you continue to report to this committee with follow-ups on this report, a broad strategic plan for how we meet the bathroom facility needs of our homeless population in a cost-effective way. So self-cleaning toilets, opening uh, park bathrooms, you know, in the evening with an attendant if necessary, uh, putting up porta-potties wherever. A plan that once and for all gets our arms around this problem holistically. Um, I would really like to see that happen. Related to that, and Madam Chair, if I may, I'd, I'd like to request that we request that of, of sanitation to come back with, with such a plan. Um, related to that is a, a problem that is a particularly acute in Ms. Martinez's district and myself, and that is um, uh, RV dwellers who have very little choice but to dump their uh, waste tanks into the streets. And um, I, I think we've, I've spoken informally with sanitation about, about the idea of bringing mobile facilities to the RV encampments so that they have an opportunity to empty the tanks in a sanitary way or some other solution to address that fundamental problem. Where do we stand with finding solutions for that? Right now, Council Member, we're looking at rolling that out with the October 1st deployment okay. so that we can start servicing those RVs at location, at Terrific. site. Uh, for those that are leaking, we'll, we'll take a more proactive approach, but we want to service those that are there uh, so that they can, I mean, that's part of our core business, the bio waste hazard, so. But that hasn't started to take place now, right? I mean, We're looking, this goes into effect the after unit. the deployment right. of October 1st. Correct. Very we, good. We, we've looked at several models to kind of uh, provide not only the, the suction, the anti gump type suction component of it, but also the ability to uh, steam clean if needed around a, a location. Uh, so we've looked at several um, uh, prototypes of what it would look like, a compact unit that has everything on it to service uh, a bus stop that's kind of tacky to an RV that needs that kind of uh, suction facility or even to to add to a um, porta potties or anything that we might develop in the future, this would be a, a, an internal uh, component of what we would service throughout. But it, it's, again, it's building that model that can be universal. It could pump an RV or steam clean a bus stop that has, you know, been neglected for a while. But uh, we are looking at that, and uh, we should have some kind of model. We, we're testing it right now, so we don't have the complete funding for it, but it, we, we're in that process of coming up with a concept. Well, we can't get it soon enough. Uh, it's a major, major problem in the in the Northeast Valley for sure. Thank you.
Mr. Sayu? On this uh, strategic plan, let me add uh, points of reference. MTA stops uh, coming and going, uh, public parks, public schools, public libraries, uh, bus stops, and the array of civic centers throughout the, uh, throughout the city. I hope the survey, the plan and the survey gives us some insight into what's, what's open to the public today, the status, what's available after hours. Uh, we need to scale up yep. this discussion of one and a city of four million people is just... Uh, Miss, connect the dots. Yep. Okay. okay, there are no further questions. We'll schedule another update before the October 1st deployment. Um, to include the strategic plan that both Mr. Krikorian and Mr. Sedillo spoke about. Okay? Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, members, if there is no objection, I'd like to move for approval items number five and seven. Without objection, that will be the order. Let's go ahead and take up item number six. Can you please uh, read that into the record? Certainly, Madam Chair. Item number six relates to CAO reports in response to motion Buscano Blumenfield Martinez relative to a pilot program to employ homeless individuals for the loose litter cleanup program. All right, thank you. We're going to have someone from the CAO's office, someone from sanitation. Is that Domingo? Is that you? On item number six? I have Mr. Poon. Is that you, sir? Yes. And Mr. Domingo, you didn't know you were doing this item? <laughs> well, you do now. Um, all right, so <laughs> there, there was a series of conversations in various committees about this motion that's almost two years old. And so I just want to, I know that this pilot is not fully up and running. I'd like to find out why and what we need to do to um, get the pilot going as soon as possible. So what are those steps moving forward? If you can just please update us. Thank you. Sure. Um, Wilson Poon with the Office of the CAO. Um, so this item was heard in this committee last October. Then it went to the Public Works Committee in, in November. And I believe it was in Budget Finance last December. Um, the CAO reports in the council file kind of include a lot of um, addressing a lot of concerns that those committee members had brought up, including how can we integrate this program with the target local hire program versus the cost. For just a second. Martha, can you please ask our friends to just lower their voices outside so I can. Mr. Poon. Go ahead. Um, so we also looked at some of the costs of the program, how we could reduce it. We also looked at whether this program is best housed in OCB or versus sanitation. And I think we looked at other funding sources like HEAP funds as well and um, other homelessness funds. So that's kind of where we're at. Um, there was no funding included in the 1920 budget for this program. I mean, we could instruct us to go back and look at that, uh, whether you want to use um, unrestricted UB general fund dollars or we can... I can talk with our homeless coordinator and see if uh, there's any available state or federal funding that's available as well. So, LA Sanitation's here to assist with that. Are there any questions? I do have instructions that I'd like to read into the record. Any questions? No? Yeah, actually. Oh, sure, Mr. Uh, thanks. Um, so, in last June, uh, the council authorized a homeless litter pilot program uh, and set aside $150,000, or I can think of existing funds, actually. Right. Um, so how does that correlate with this proposed program? So if I may, uh, Council Member Domingo Rosco, Ali San, the $150,000 that was in the previous report back prior to Council recess in July was used for a pilot program within Skid Row. Uh, and we're also looking at Northeast Valley as well for further deployment of that. Okay. Um, it, it, it's a very similar model. Uh, that was a, a component. We were originally going to look at Chrysalis, but I think that came out of the Employment Development Department okay. as an original kind of an attachment. So, so it's a little nebulous to be to be clear, sir. Uh, to be I, honest, I'm I'm just I guess I think this is a terrific program. Yeah. I'm trying to understand the cost effectiveness of various mm -hmm. approaches to it, and so. Do we? Do you know offhand that $150,000 uh, program in Skid Row, how many people were served by that? Uh, 
Uh, right now, I do not. We've used a group, Urban Alchemy, and they've actually started doing some of the loose litter. And actually, we've received quite a bit of compliments from in and around the area on actually keeping the street a little bit cleaner, a little bit nicer, yeah. a little bit more passable, um, as it complements more of our comprehensive cleanups yeah. that rotate that area. So, you know, in my district, we're doing clean streets, clean starts. I know in the 12th district is used that. I think, mm -hmm. Ms. Martinez, you've, you've yeah. d d used that, this program as well. Um, it's a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction of this cost mm -hmm. per person. Mm -hmm. um, now, it's a different kind of program. Uh, I, I recognize mm -hmm. that. And I think LA Rise, we added, um, in the last budget, we added an additional $2 million in LA Rise funding, which would if I recall correctly, would service an additional 275 people. So if that's if I'm right about that, that's about comparable with the program that we're talking about in, in this item. Is that? It, it's a similar model, I would similar have to cost. That, I think, right? Member. I would have to research that. Do you know Dennis? Do you know that offhand? I, I don't know it offhand. Uh, Pepe Garcia may know the answer to that. Oh, sorry. So, um, we, we funded, we gave to LA Rise an additional $2 million in last year's budget, I think it was last year's budget, in order to support um, the LA Rise employment services for an additional 275 people, or that was the estimate of the number of people would be serviced uh, with that much money. Um, and if I'm right about that, then that sounds like that's a comparable per person cost to what this program that's before us today uh, is costing. It's also run by Chrysalis, so I assume it's, it's a similar model, similar cost. You're talking about ur Urban Alchemy, right? Urban Alchemy? Or? Uh, right? Council Member, you're speaking about LA Rise, LA Rise. and the $2 million in LA funding Rise, that they received. Yeah. I, I believe, again, that was out of EWDD. Yeah, that, that's in the EWDD budget. So, I mean, I could, we can go back and talk to them to see. I'm not sure if there's anybody here from EWDD. I, I don't mean to belabor the point. It's just that, you know, th there's kind of sticker shock at first blush mm -hmm. in looking at spending this much money for a relatively small number of, of people. But having looked at this, having compared it with LA Rise, the degree of services involved are significant. Um, it's a different kind of program than either our targeted local hire. It's different than clean streets, clean starts. It's, it's designed to have targeted wraparound services which are going to be more expensive. So um, I guess I've become, in looking at this 18 different ways, I guess I've become satisfied that this is um, an appropriate amount of money to, to spend for the degree of services uh, obtained. I guess the one question I would have is um, uh, it was sole sourced. Um, and I think when we were last talking about this, uh, we talked about are there are there other providers who might provide different models who might be able to do things uh, with different innovative approaches that might be more cost effective that uh, I, I'd look, I mean this is a pilot program right. I get it but I think we should pilot many programs and, with many providers and see which one works mm -hmm. get some competition going so we can determine which of the service providers is actually delivering results for the money that we're spending at the lowest possible cost so that we can serve the most people. So has that been done? Has, it, has any effort been done to kind of put out um, an RFI or something to determine what service providers might be able to do similar work and what would the cost of that be? So right now we're looking at, it's an excellent question, Council Member, in the mobile hygiene unit we're looking at different ways that we can quickly bring in different service providers. Uh, to, to service that as a kind of a model, as a baseline, so that we can look at different ways of deployment. When we're looking at this kind of a program, we're kind of looking in the same way. If we start going into the RFI, RFP process, that just becomes kind of a, a longer, more protracted program. We're Granted. trying to find a way to onboard people quickly to provide those services that will basically be a force multiplier for the services that we provide in the streets. I totally agree with that, and I suspect I'm going to be eager to support Ms. Martinez's recommendations in moving this, I, I assume, moving this forward. But at the same time, mm -hmm. I think we need to roll out a wider net to find other approaches, other programs that may be able to come in 
at a at a cheaper per person cost mm -hmm. so that we can provide more services to more people and, we'll be and, and ensure the best result because a lot of times uh, it pilot program after pilot program after pilot program in every policy area that we deal with but especially with homelessness we launch our pilot program and that's the last anybody ever hears about it and we never go back and say did this work did this did we get the results we expected to for the money uh, are there ways that we could get the same results for half the cost are there ways that we could serve more people for the same money we don't do that as a city very often and in a program like this where we're dealing with um, a population with such great and diverse and unique individual needs the more different approaches we have to compete against one another, the better, as far as I'm concerned. So, Absolutely. Uh, council member, if I could add a little contest. Yeah. Um, for those of you that have spent any time talking to council member Busca, you know, you'll probably know that impatience is one of his key characteristics. And so the reason why we work with CAO to go with Chrysalis is we really wanted to get something off the ground and running as quick as possible. So we kind of did a survey of what organizations were around, and we found out that, that Chrysalis has the most experience doing this. They work with Caltrans. Several of the business improvement districts downtown work with them already. So I think we were looking for something that would give us the greatest chance of success up front and to do something quickly. But our intention all along was to see how it works for a year, kind of get experience with some of the, the things that worked with the program and didn't work, and then that would help us develop an RFP if it is successful moving forward with a different service provider. I do recall you mentioned the Clean Streets, Clean Starts program at the last committee meeting, and we did look into that. It's a, a slightly different model where they're not, Quite different. They're not paying an, an hourly wage, but instead provide a stipend each day. Um, this is kind of in the middle between hiring city employees. I think that cost would be, uh, I think the CAO's report said it would be about $5 million more to hire city employees, but this isn't quite as cost effective as the clean streets, clean starts. So we're trying to find something a little bit in the middle. But um, the intention all along was certainly to see, to track the results, and then if it, if it is successful, to put it out to bid and see what other providers and what other ideas are out there. So I totally get that. I am also extremely impatient. <laughs> and so I say, don't wait for the results of this. Let's do the pilot program, figure out whether this works. But in the meantime, let's cast the net out there and see what the service provider world has to provide to us. Mm -hmm. There's probably innovative people who are thinking about this, you know, who have programs that are already running in other cities. You know, why are we waiting around for the results of this one to come back before we even ask the question? Let's get it out there. Let's put an RFI out there, an RFQ out there, whatever it is, um, to start getting input from service providers, you know, all around and see what the best practices are that they're already implementing so that we can get it rolling. Be happy to look at all well, that. I'm very impatient, but I also follow the rules. Mr. Gleason, please wait for the chair to call you <laughs> to address this committee next time. Certainly. <laughs> Thank you. Um, um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and give some instructions. Um, I want to instruct the CLA and the CEO and SAN to prepare a report confirming the appropriate framework for this pilot along with any necessary instructions to sanitation as well as recommendations on a funding strategy to implement this program along with the recommendations that Mr. Kokorian just laid out as well. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Seeing none, thank you very much. Um, go ahead and move for approval. Of, well, their instructions are before you. Any objections? Seeing none. Okay. Are there any other, anything else before this committee? No? No, Madam Chair. Let's go ahead and uh, move to adjourn. Thank you very much. Wilson? What did we buy? What did we buy? That's a fine.